You're welcome to this class again. Today we are going to revise 2023 past question on physics. Do sit down, relax, and enjoy. But if you're a student, I will advise you have your pen and let's go. Well, the first question here is the instrument used to measure relative humidity is A, is barometer. Barometer is an instrument used for measuring atmospheric pressure. We have hydrometer and then C, hygrometer and manometer. I think the answer there is B, B, hydrometer. Why? When we talk about hygrometer, it's used for measuring relative humidity. Humidity. Why manometer is used for measuring gas pressure? So the option is B. The part of the eye, the part of the human eye performing the same function as the diaphragm in a lens camera is chloroid, no? Iris, cornea, retina. Retina is like a film. When you talk about a film where the image is first cast before the interpretation. You know, image first cast on a wall at the back of your, in, in your head, and that is where the interpretation is made to tell you what you are seeing. So that is what iris does. I think cornea is the, the whole, the structure of your eyes. So the, the right option here is B, which is iris. An electron moves from an energy level of minus, minus 8.6 electron volts to another level of minus 3.5 electron volts. Determine the frequency of the absorbed radiation. Take one electron volt to be 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 and heads at 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34 joule second. All right, let's start with that. And according to Nell Ball, when you talk about energy quantization, we have that from lower energy level because it has higher number, minus 8. So I'm going to have that. Look at this. Change in the energy is equal to E, maybe En minus Em, whereby I'm calling this one higher, higher level, while this one is lower level. Now, the next thing I'm going to say is change in E is equal to HF, whereby H is the H you are seeing there, which is Planck's constant, and F is the frequency. But first, we need to find this, to find what our change in E is. Our change in E, we are going to have minus 8.6 electron volts, minus, there is minus there, right? Then there is minus 3.5 electron volts, which is equal to H which is 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34 times the frequency I'm looking for. All right, so this is going to be minus 8.6 EV plus 3.5 EV, which is equal to 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34 multiplied by the frequency. All right, so in this case, I'm going to the is supposed to be from an energy level of this to. So it is starting from the lower to higher. Yes, from lower to higher. This is higher. This is higher energy level. The higher energy level is minus 3.5 electron volt to minus minus. Lower energy level is 8.6 EV. So this is going to be plus and this is minus. All right, so... This is going to be 6 minus 5 is 1, 8 minus 3 is 5, 5.1 EV is equal to 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34 F. Now, one electron volt is given as 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19. 1.6, yes, 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19. So, 5.1 times electron volt is 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 equal to 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34 F. So I will divide both sides. If I divide this by 6.6 .6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34, divide by 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34, everything here cancels this. I'm going to deal with this whole thing. So 5.1 5, 5 times 6, no, times 1.6. We have 
one point, I mean, 8.16 divided by 6.6. .6. I have 1.24 times 10 raised to the power. This is 34 minus 19 hertz is equal to F. Do you know why? Because this is minus 34. And, you know, according to law of indices, when you are dividing the same base, their powers we subtract. So minus 19 minus minus 34 means 34 positive and 19 negative. So, so this is going to be 34 minus 19 is going to be 15 and everything is in hertz. Do we have that option? 15. 1.24 times 10 raised to power, okay? The option is there in option A. Number four. All right, let me take this part, number, and that is number four. A ball of mass 0 0.8 is dropped from a height just before hitting the ground, its velocity is. When a ball is dropped from height, I think there's not much of analysis there. I will use this 2GH. This is the final velocity, the velocity before it hits the ground. Why this is the initial velocity from where it is dropped. So V is equal to 2 times 10. G is 10 times. OK, I'm looking for the height. So uh, this V is already given to me as 5. So this is going to be 25. 5 squared is 25 times 10 times H. This is 25 is equal to 20 H. So H is equal to 25 over 20. And this is going to be 5 into this is 4. 5 into this is 5, which is 1.25 meters. All right. Um, the option is 1.25. Okay. So that's number 4. Number 5. Which of the following statements about latent heat are correct? One, when ice melts, latent heat is absorbed. When ice melts, latent heat is absorbed. So what leads to melting? Melting means heat is added. Yes, for heat to be added, heat is absorbed. So that one is a very correct statement. When water freezes, freezing means heat is taken away. Latent heat is given off. Yes, that is correct as well. When water evaporates, that means from water to vapor, from water to gas, from liquid to gas, latent heat is given off. Yes, latent heat is given off. Yes, that's correct. When water evaporates, gonna no. So I will choose one, two, three. Option C is correct. Increasing the frequency of a sound wave produces a sound with longer wavelength, no. Reduced loudness. Frequency is not characterized by loudness, no. Pitch is correct. Um, higher pitch must be produced. More over to no. The answer is higher pitch because the characteristics of frequency is pitch, you know, is related to frequency. So that option is the best. Which of, these, which of the following diagram correctly illustrates the mode of oscillation of air in a tube for the first over tune? When we talk about first over tune, we are talking about second harmonics. And for a sound, and everything there is open tube. Yes, the tubes are all open. So for an open tube, open tube, the, the wave in an open tube goes this way. Yes, if it is a closed tube, it's going to be like this. So this is the wave. The wave, wave is, is shown. The pictorial form of wave is this one. So for this, is first over tune. No, not first over tune. This is first harmonics. Then sec, first over tune means second harmonic. For second harmonics, the right thing there is this option is the right one. This is second 
harmonies, which is the first overtone. In a mass spectrometer, an ion of charge Q and mass M move in a path of radius R in a field of flux density B has a speed of. Um, when a, a, a body is moving in a circular path, there is a circular movement, yes, with this R, then there must be a tangential velocity. Yes, in this case, there is a a force, two forces must be there, which is called centripetal force, must be equal to um, a force of a magnetic field. Yes, they are, they are the same thing, they must be equal to. So this is mv square over r, which is the centripetal force, must be equal to, and that force is qvb. Yes, qvb. All right, so. So what happens when I am looking for V, so V cancels one V. So I'm having MV is equal to QBR. So V is equal to QBR over M. So that will be the velocity. Do I have QBR or B, okay, I'm looking for BQR. B, Q, R, okay? That is option C, and that is correct. In number nine, the sound of frequency 512 five, hertz reaches a listener 100 meters away. If the sound travels in an air at STP, what is the wavelength? Um, I have the speed there. Speed is 331. Um, the speed of sound... Of course, it's a wave. This is the speed for a wave. STP. How am I going to relate that? I think since I'm looking for wavelength and I have frequency and speed, that will be fine. So this is tray, tray 1 is equal to 512 lambda. Lambda is tray, tray 1 all over 512. Tray, tray 1 divided by 512. So lambda is 0 0.6. Four six meters. Okay, the option is there. Number ten. In the Rutherford scattering experiment, a beam of alpha particle was fired at a thin gold film, and few of the particles were deflected considerably. This shows that the nucleus of an atom. All right. Um, this man came with. A, a better version of the Thomson's, um, you know, atomic model, whereby he talked about plum pudding experiment. But this man came and conducted an experiment with this, with a foil, whereby an alpha particle was, was, you know, directed at this foil, which is a, a metal foil. So when they were scattering, all the the they were all going through these places and they were passing through. But there was a point at the middle where they could not. When they hit there, they returned back. He now asked himself, what must have made this not to pass through while the other ones were able to pass through? He came up with this conclusion. Let's find out if one of his conclusions was captured in the option. This shows that the nucleus of an atom contains proton and electron distributed in a tiny volume? No. It's positively charged and is concentrated in a tiny volume. I think this is okay. This is very good. Let's check C. It's distributed in a tiny volume and emits alpha particles. No, it's not distributed. It's concentrated in a tiny volume and contains alpha. It's not alpha particle that it contains. It is also not alpha particle, but what Rutherford said is that it's posit there is a positive charge and is concentrated in a tiny volume of that space in this tiny space. So that option B is correct for me. A charge C, 10 coulomb, is transferred across a potential difference of 220 volts. Determine the work. Work is, when we talk about electric work, remember work has different based on the branch of physics. Work is force times 
distance for mechanics. Work is QV for electricity. So work here is absolutely, the charge is 10 times V, voltage is 220. Therefore, work here is 2200 joules. 220 joules, 00, zero joules, yes, that is option. Then, a solenoid is constructed by winding an insulated copper on a long test tube. A constant direct current is passed through the solenoid. Which of the following actions will not increase the strength of the magnetic field of the solenoid? In certain A, one, nickel rod in the test tube. No, nickel is one of those metals that can help to increase the strength of a solenoid or the strength of the magnetic field of a solenoid. Yes. Brass, I'm not sure. Soft iron is good. Steel rod is good. But that brass, brass does not have that quality. I mean, not that it cannot, but it's not as good as the three other metals, nickel, soft rod, and steel rod mentioned. So the option is B. The statement, the following statement are advantages of a solid dielectric material between the plates of a capacitor, except that, you know, when we talk about a capacitor, let's assume this is a capacitor. You know, one is positive, positive, one is negative, negative. So within this place, there is a dielectric, there is a space which is an insulator which is separating between one pole and another pole. However, for this reason, electric field, a uniform electric field, is built between the space of the positive and negative. But then, what are they saying? He said, which of all these things are correct, except which one is not correct? It keeps the plates at a fixed separation, of course. The, the, the distance of the dielectric is just occupying will never allow this positive rod and negative rod to shift, so they are put in a fixed position. The maximum potential difference the capacitor can withstand is increased. Okay, can we, yes, let's continue, that's okay. The capacitance of the capacitor is given a dimension in much greater than that of the plate in a vacuum. Okay, it has sense in it. It increases the electrical conductivity of the capacitor. A capacitor can never increase its level of how good it can conduct by a dielectric. No. So this option is not going to be an advantage of dielectric. Which of the following statements about a ferromagnetic material is correct? Which of them is correct? It attracts non-magnetic material. Which of the following statements about ferromagnetic material is correct? It attracts non-magnetic material. Ferro, when we talk about ferro, it means ion. So a kind of good magnetic material. It cannot attract non-magnetic. This is wrong. It has low relative permeability. No. Permeability. No. Repairs other magnetic materials. No. Has high susceptibility. Has, high, has a high source. susceptibility. OK. Uh, I think this is the right option, not this one, not this one. All right. Now, a ball P is released from a roof of a building at the same time as another ball, Q, is thrown vertically upward from the base of the building. Which of the following statements is correct? Acceleration, provided the body is thrown up, is, is falling from up, down, or I am throwing the body up. There is only one thing that will be the acceleration. Acceleration must be G, which is acceleration under gravity. So it, it must not be greater. They must be the same. Yes, because the same G, it must be 10, whether it's going up or whether it's coming down. The acceleration of P is greater than that. No, it cannot be greater. The acceleration of P is equal to that of Q. And... Both are in the same direction. No. The acceleration can change its direction. If it is coming down, it's positive. If it's going up, it's negative. No. 
B, the acceleration of P is equal to that of Q, and they are in opposite direction. C is a very good one, but let's find D. The acceleration of P is less. Never. It can never be less. So I'm choosing option C. Number 16. A planet, okay? A planet, a planet has M and R. A planet has M and R, okay? If the universal gravitational constant is G, what is the expression for the escape velocity of an object on the planet? And the planet M, okay. All right, um, for that to happen, escape velocity, okay? Let's assume this is the Earth and the center of the Earth with capital R and then this body, M. The work done in moving this body from here to this place must be work, work done in moving this from here to here has to do with the work which is going to be force times distance. The force must be a centripetal force, which in this case is acting as a universal gravitational force. And that force is given as G, M, capital M, all over R squared. Then what is the distance? Of course, the distance must be R. Yes, the distance must be R. So the work done must be equal to the kinetic energy. So I'm going to have G, small g, capital G, all over R squared times capital R must be equal to must be equal to half m v square. This is the velocity of the planet. And this is the velocity of the escape velocity we are looking for. So this r cancels this r. I have g m capital G all over capital R is equal to. OK, this m cancels this m. So I have v all over 2. This implies that um, VP is equal to 2GM all over R square. So if I take square root of both sides, VP, the, the velocity or escape velocity of the planet, is equal to plus or minus G, 2GM all over R. Yes, this is it. Do I have that option? 2G over capital R. Yes, this option is correct because I can remove this root and write it as a power of 1 over 2. And that is the option there. Specific latent heat of vaporization of lead is 8.7 times 10 raised to the power 5 joule per kilogram. This means that 8.7 times 5, no, I mean, this means that 8.7 times 10 raised to the power 5 joule of thermal energy is required to. When we talk about latent heat, specific latent heat is the quantity of heat required to change a unit mass or one kilogram of mass of a body without changing temperature. Okay? So, one kg of molten. Molten means in a liquid form. Of course, we are talking about from liquid to gases. That is why it must be vaporization. Okay, fine. One kg of molten led to vapor at constant temperature and pressure. Yeah, this is good. One kg of molten lead to vapor. This is correct. This is good. Which other one? One kg of solid. No, it's not solid. It can be solid. We are talking about latent heat of vaporization, so it must be either from vapor to liquid or from liquid to vapor, so it can be solid. So that solid alone has put me off this rather. Oh, sorry. So number, a given mass of molten lead to vapor at constant temperature. A given mass. No, a given mass is latent heat, but when it is specific, it must be 1 kg. 
So one kg of molten lead to vapor for every no. So option A is what I stick with. 100 kg device is pulled up a, a plane inclined at 30 degree, 30 degree, inclined at 30 degree to the horizontal with a force of 1,000 Newton. If the coefficient of friction between the device and the um, between the device and the surface is 0 0.25. Determine the total force opposing the motion. Take G as 10. OK. Let's say that um, this is my inclined plane, 30 degrees. There must be a weight acting downward. And there is a force pulling it upward. So let me call that force. The force is 1,000 Newton. Because they said, pulled up a plane inclined at, to the horizontal with a force pulled up with that force, 1,000 Newton. So I'm going, to resolve, I'm going to resolve this weight into this side, which is the horizontal component and the vertical component. Resolving it vertical component means mg cos theta. mg is same thing as weight. And this angle between this place is 30. These are all proven principles. Then there is a normal reaction. The reaction of the plane on the body, while the force acting downward must be mg sine theta, which is resolving this weight to the horizontal, whereby I'm looking at this these are in this direction, which is my y and x. Or this is y and x, you know. So this is the, my x, which is the horizontal component. And then there must be a force called frictional force, which is also pulling it in this direction. So these forces are pulling this body downward. Y1000 force is pulling it upward. Let's find that force, the two of them, because they say we should determine the total force opposing the motion. Simple. The total force F opposing must be equal to frictional force plus mg sine theta. They are only the ones moving in this direction. So this is going to be mu mg cos theta plus mg sine theta. All right. So the mu is going to be 0 0.25 times mg is 1,000 <coughs> times cos 30 is 0 0.8660 plus mg is 1,000. mg means 100 kg multiplied by g, which is acceleration due to gravity. That is how I'm getting 1,000, not this 1,000. All right. mg sine sin 30 is also 0 0.5. So I'm going to factor 1,000 out. 1,000 out, we have 0 0.25 times 8, 0 0.8660 plus, OK, this is 0 0.5. All right, I would have this multiplied. This is 500. I think that's what I would do instead of, don't worry. Let me make it faster. So in this case, I'm going to have 250 times 8 point, 0 0.8660 plus 500. So I will just multiply 250 times 0 0.8660, which is 216.5 plus 500, which is 716.5 Newton. So this is the force required to keep the body, to pull it down, I mean the force opposing the motion and the option is there all right uh, number let me review this number please uh, acceleration due to gravity the option is d because the acceleration of p is less than that no it can be you say a body a ball p is reversed is released from the roof of a building at the same time as another ball q is thrown vertically upward from the base of the building 
which of the following statement is correct? Okay. The acceleration, acceleration due to gravity is always acting on the body when the body is thrown up. When the body is thrown up, acceleration due to gravity is acting on it. When the body is allowed to fall down, acceleration due to gravity is acting on it. So acceleration due to gravity must be there. And acceleration due to gravity is G, which is always 10. So whether it is thrown up or is thrown down, the acceleration due to gravity will not change its value. So for that reason, the acceleration of P is greater than that of Q. It's not true. So it's not that option B. The acceleration of P is equal to that of Q. Yes. And both are moving in the same direction. The option is okay, it's good. Let's look at C. The acceleration of P is equal to that of Q and they are moving in opposite. They cannot move in opposite direction. The acceleration cannot move in opposite direction. Uh, I know when a body is thrown down, it is going with a positive G. When a body is thrown up, it is going with a negative G. That does not mean the acceleration was moving up. However, acceleration due to gravity is always acting to pull a body down. No, nothing else. So that is why they must move in the same direction. So option B is a better option. So let's go to number 19. Two objects A and B accelerate from rest at uniform rate. Accelerate from rest at uniform rate. B accelerates twice as much as compared to A. B travels. All right. I think that question is calculation based. Now, in this case, two objects, A and B, accelerate from rest. So, so UB is zero. UA is zero. The initial velocity is zero. And B accelerates twice as much as A. B, acceleration of A. Acceleration of B is equal to two times acceleration of A. Yes. Now, I'm going to use S for B. The distance B is good. Okay, fine. This is the demo formula, which is UT plus half GT square. Is it G? Okay, fine. It should be A. It's, we are looking for acceleration. All right. So I'm going to have that the distance for B is going to be Everything here is zero, so have, have A for B, T square. Then also have S A, the distance for A is half A, A, T square. All right, so let's keep going. In equation one, I will, since Acceleration of A is two times that of A. Acceleration of B is two times that of A. I'm going to have that. Distance of A is half bracket. Two. This is B, which is two acceleration of A. T square. And this is SA is equal to. This cancel this. This is A raised to A times T square. Acceleration of A is this. Now, what are we looking for? They say, how much? He said, B accelerates twice as compared to this. B travels, okay, I am looking for B, the distance of B. So the distance of B, SB, is going to be half. Oh. <laughs> then when I have this, it's going to be 2, that of A, and times T square. Oh, okay. Um, so we said 2 times as far. No. It's not 2 times as far. From here, I will have that. The distance of B is given as, remember these two cancelled, you have A, T square. 
All right, but from this place, we know that SA, the distance of A is equal to. Yes, well, I'm going to multiply it. If I say these two times this, I'm going to have 2SA is equal to AT. Now, acceleration of A multiplied by this. Now, since this is equal to this and this one is also equal to this, therefore SB is going to be equal to 2SA. So the distance of the object B is two times the distance of the object A. Um, two times as far. So B travels two times as far. Yes. Option 20. I mean, as, uh, question 20. Looking at this cube, it said the diagram above illustrates a hot metal suspended at the center of a closed uniform box. Okay, this is the hot metal. The thermometer E, F, G, and H are placed in contact with four sides of the box. Which of the thermometers would register the highest thermometer? Okay, so um, looking at this, since the E is very, is in contact with that of E, I mean E is very close to this, I think it will register a much thermometer. <laughs> All right. Going to number 21. A liquid is left in an open dish. After several days, there is less liquid in the dish. Which of the following statements explains this observation? A. Most energetic molecules leave the surface and return. It cannot return. It can leave, but it cannot return. Most energetic molecules leave the surface and escape into the air. This is good. Least energetic molecules leave the surface and return. It cannot return. List, it cannot be list. So option B is the best. The colors of visible light region of the electromagnetic spectrum that have the shortest and the longest wavelength, respectively, are shortest wavelength, that is red, and, you know, with this word, Roy wave. So red and violet. These are the ones. Red and violet are the key major things. So let's look at this. Okay, look at this. Red and violet. So you don't need to. Red and violet. I mean violet and red. They have the shortest and the longest wavelength. Okay. Which of the following equation is not a correct mirror formula? The symbols have the... This is, of course, this is mirror's formula. This is a formula for finding the number of images formed by two mirrors when they are inclined at an angle, theta. This is a um, formula for magnification, but I, I've never seen this before, so that should be the answer. Now, an atom in an excited state is one whose potential energy, potential energy is maximum, no. Electrons are in the conduction band, no. Electrons have moved to a higher energy level, of course. Excite, excitement or um, an excited atom is the one that has absorbed energy and moves to the higher energy level. So option D is correct. The con conclusive test for magnetism in a steel bar suspended horizontally at the midpoint is when the bar always settles in the north, of course. When you suspend with this one, with a rope, suspend a, a magnetic bar, it will always move, you know, in this direction. North, south. So that option is okay. Option A, always settle in the north. It repairs by now. It's attracted north. The option A is better. Which of the following devices used to compare the relative magnitude of charges on two given bodies. When we talk about comparing, okay, a body is used in a good leave electroscope whereby the repelling and divergence 
compares the kind of, yes, when we talk about comparison of a relative, then I think electrophorus is not, electrophorus is rubbing good liver, it's just a, a rod. Uh, no, the right option is D, good liver electroscope. A direct current cannot pass through a, a direct current cannot pass through a parallel plate capacitor because the plates are non-conducting. No, the plate must conduct. The plates have a core but opposite charges. This is not the reason why they... This is not the reason. There is a leakage of... no. The dielectric between the plates is non-conducting. Yes. It cannot pass through a parallel plate capacitor because a, a dielectric between the plate is non-conducting. Yeah. The process of producing electric current by changing magnetic field is referred to as whenever there is a change in magnetic field and EMF is induced, and this is the language of electromagnetic induction, not linking flux, no? All right. A sagging of overhead electrical wires is caused by whenever there is wire through a whenever there is a current through a wire, heat is produced, and because of the heat, there is expansion, and because of that, it can sag. So many things can happen. I think linear expansion is there. It's correct. Rough handling, no. Radiation of heat, no. Gravitational attraction, no. Linear expansion is the reason, because as as it is heating, it is expanding. And after some time, it will go beyond its elastic limit or whatever. But it is mainly the reason. A cell of EMF, 2 volts. Okay. A cell of EMF, 2 volts, has an internal resistance 5. EMF, volt plus more V. This is potential difference. This is loss volt and this is EMF. EMF is 2, then current is given. For current to be given, I'm going to have R plus small r. So this is 2 is equal to 0 0.4 ampere. Passes through external resistor P. The external resistor is P plus, and internal resistor Okay, internal resistor is given as 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So 2 divided by 0 0.4 is equal to P plus 0 0.5. This is 2 divided by 4 over 10. This is 2 times 10 over 4. 5. So this is 5 is equal to P plus 0 0.5. So P is equal to 5 minus 0 0.5. P is 4.5. 4 ohms. All right, B. The property that a body, the property of a body that determines the direction of heat flow when the body is in contact with another body is, when you talk about heat flow, heat cannot flow except there is difference in temperature. So heat flow is not about power, it's not about heat capacity, it's about temperature. Temperature is the right option. That was a very easy one. In an, in an RLC series circuit, at resonance, the voltage across the resistor and the inductor are given as 30 volts and 40 volts respectively, determine the voltage across the capacitor. Whenever we talk about resonance in an RLC, RLC circuit, at resonance, VL must be equal to VC. That means the voltage across the inductor must be equal to voltage across the capacitor. So the voltage across the inductor is 40. Therefore, the voltage across the capacitor must be 40 at resonance. The purpose of commu commutator in a direct current is to, it must be to reverse. Increase the efficiency of the motor, no? Reverse the direction of the current after every half, of course. 
enable a uniform couple of the coil? No. Increase the number of rotation? No. The answer is B. You can check it up as well. This is one of the difference between AC circuit or AC motors and that of DC motors. A bullet lead, a lead bullet of mass. Okay. A lead bullet of mass. 0 0.5 is fired with a speed of 200 meters per second onto a lead of mass 0 0.95 at rest. All right, this is M1U1 plus M2U2 is equal to M1V1 plus M2V2. This is the job of a momentum. Momentum before must be equal to momentum after. So this is momentum before. The lead, a lead mass. The mass M1 is for the lead, which is, let me call it ML for lead with initial speed of the lead plus. The other object is at rest, so everything is going to be zero. For a body to be at rest, its initial velocity is zero, so zero times m is going to be zero. And this is equal to, what happens? It's fired with a speed of 200 onto a lead block, 0 0.5, at rest. Given that, at this rest, given that the lead block moves after the impact, determine its Kinetic energy. Okay. The two of them must stick together and move. Yes. It, it, it is, it, the two of them will, will, must stick together and move. So I'm going to have the, the mass of the lead times velocity plus the mass of the other body, which is the mass of the block and velocity because they have common velocity. So this is mass of the lead and initial velocity of the lead is equal to mass of, of lead plus mass of the block all multiplied by the common velocity. Now, in this case, mass of the lead is 0 0.05 times 200 is equal to mass of the lead is 0 0.05 plus mass of the block is 9, 0 0.95, 0 0.95, all multiplied by that V, which I do not know. All right, so at this point, this is, 5 all over 100 times 200, which is 10. So this is 10 is equal to, this is going to be 1. Therefore, V is 10 meters per second. So the voltage is 10 meters per second. So what is the kinetic? <laughs> Determine the kinetic energy after the impact. After the impact, the two bodies will move together. So kinetic energy is going to be M1 plus ML plus MB. MB times 1 over 2 times V squared. So this plus this is 1 times 1 over 2 times V squared is 100. You know, V squared is 100 because 10 squared is going to be 1 over 2 times 100, which is 50. Um, kinetic energy must be in joules. Okay, I have 50 joules, that's correct. What is the name given to the force of attraction between the molecules, the nucleons, in the nucleus of an atom? The nucleus, when we talk about nucleons, we're talking about proton and neutron in an atom. That must be nuclear force. That's a very easy one. In a controlled thermal fission reaction, reactor, the use of control rod will not affect the speed of the, of course. Um, what control rod does is to limit the number of neutrons that we are produced to avoid much atomic bombing. Yes, to, av to avoid more neutrons produced means more nuclear reaction and it means more explosion. But rate of production, no. Energy generated on the nuclear reactor, no. So that option is the best. 38. The type of mirror used by dentists to inspect the teeth of patients is should be concave, yeah. Because concave has a way of magnifying the image when the, the, Im the object is very close between the optical center and the principal focus. So optical, I mean, concave mirror is the right option. The diagram, 
The diagram below illustrates a mode of vibration of a wire of length 125 cm. 125 cm. The speed of the wave along wire is 120. Okay. Determine. Use the diagram to answer the question. Now, I, I like to use this approach. How many waves? This is one, two, three, four, five. Five number of waves, or simply put, look at this. From here to here, one, this is one wave length. This is two wavelengths. And this is half length. So we have 2.5. So how many wavelengths? We have 2.5 wavelength is equal to 125. 125, I will convert it to meter, is equal to 125 cm divided by 100. So this is going to be equal to 125 over 100 times 1 over 2.5. Simply put, zero point five, because this is going to be one two five divided by two fifty, which is zero point five meters. So the wavelength is zero point five meters. Because I divided this, I div I converted this to meter, so that is why I have this. So the next option, number forty, and the diagram below. Okay. I have the speed and I have the wavelength. What am I looking at? The speed of the wavelength is this. Use the diagram to answer the question. Determine the frequency. Okay. I have the speed and I have the wavelength. Speed is 120. F 0 0.5. So F is equal to 120 divided by 0 0.5, which is 120 divided by 5 over 10. 120 times 10 over 5. Okay, this into this is 60. We now have 1, 2, 0, 0, divided by 5. 240, so frequency is 240 hertz. 240 hertz frequency is there. 41, we say, which of the following statements about properties of the electric field produced by changing parallel, produced by charged parallel plate is not correct? Charged parallel plate. Okay. The electric field in the region outside the parallel plate is zero. Yeah. Except for the edges effect, of course. The electric field is uniform everywhere in the space between the parallel plates. That's true. Because we are looking at, let's assume, so let's, if this is plus plus, Then electric field here is the field built in this place. This is what I'm looking for, parallel plates. In this case, the option two, they are very correct. The magnitude of the electric field strength at any point between the plates, except near the edges, depends on the magnitude of the charge on each plate. The magnitude of the electric field strength at any point between the plate is directly proportional to the magnitude of the charge on each plate. The magnitude of electric field strength at any point, at any point, no, cannot be. Distance is affecting them. So this cannot be true. A car P with a velocity 30 meters per second is traveling in the same direction as car Q with a velocity of 20. The velocity of P relative to Q is they are moving in the same direction, so they subtract. So 30 minus 20 is going to be 10. That was the easy one. The range of velocity 
the range of wavelength of the infrared, the range of wavelength of the infrared wave in electromagnetic spectrum is minus 10 raised to the power 3, I mean 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter to 10 raised to the power minus 6 meter. The wavelength of the radiation is okay, equal to 10 raised to the power 3 is not true. Longer than is not true. Shorter than is not longer than raised to the power. Yes, because because something started from somewhere to somewhere. The least one is 10 raised to the power minus 6, and the biggest is 10 raised to the power minus 3. So for it to have that wavelength, it must be longer than this. You know, this is the least. It should be bigger. According to the question. 44. You say what when an electron jumps from an orbit of 4 to 2, 4 is higher to 2, according to Nels Ball's energy level. If it starts from 4 and jumps to 2, for example, what happens? It must have given out some radiation. So what happens? A photon is emitted, that's correct. A photon is absorbed, it's not true. Two photons, no, no. So, from higher energy level to lower energy level, deals with emission of radiation, but from lower to higher deals with absorption of radiation or excitement. When a lightweight body and a massive body are acted upon by the same force on the same period of time, the momentum of both bodies remain the same. Lighter body has a higher momentum. Massive body has a no. Momentum must be the same. Like I mean, they have the same force. Mass changing v all over t. F t is m changing v. So there must be the same momentum because momentum must be equal for these two bodies. Because the one with a heavy body we balance that with small body because it will move more. So the velocity will balance and they will be equal in momentum. Which of the following devices is associated with alternating current? Induction current. Yeah, induction current is also there. Acid lead accumulator. So it depends on what they are Okay, step up transformer is the best. Because in step up transformer, the number of coils in the, the number of coil in the primary must be higher than that number of coil. No, the number of coil in the primary must be lower than the number of coil in the primary in the secondary. All right, the option is step up transformer. A body starts with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second and moves with a uniform acceleration for 15 seconds. Which of the following equations represent the distance traveled? Okay, they have given us a lead in that examples with the options they gave us there. So I'm using this formula, S is equal to UT plus half AT squared. The body starts with initial velocity of 20, okay? Which is 20 times, the time is given as 15. Acceleration is not given times 15 squared. S is equal to 20 times 15, 300. So this is 300 plus 225A over 2. 300, 225 over A. 225A over 2. 225A over 2. Okay, 48. The ratio of a range, the ratio of maximum range to maximum height of a projectile is 4. Determine the angle of projection. For us to have a maximum, a maximum range, the angle must be 45 degrees. So I'm not solving. I'm having 45 degrees. Maximum range must be 45 degrees. Which the following statements are observed 
are observations made about towing vehicle and a bus that is being towed. Okay, there is one towing and one that is being towed. Okay, the force exerted on the bus by the towing vehicle is of the same magnitude as the force that the bus exerted on the road. The force exerted on the bus by the towing vehicle is the same exerted on, okay? The force exerted on the bus by the towing vehicle is of the same magnitude as the force exerted on the towing vehicle by the bus, okay? If I hit my hand on the board, the board is also hitting on my hand. So according to third law of motion, according to Sir Isaac Newton, force, I mean, uh, action must, must, be, must be balanced with opposite reaction. So option two looks very good. Let me go to three. The towing vehicle is at a force on the bus greater than no greater than the force is that on the bus on the towing machine the towing vehicle is that a force on the bus that is the same as the force the road is that on the towing vehicle which of these statements is or are correct i will go with only two number 50. all right the diagram above illustrates the diagram above illustrates a velocity time all right, the diagram above illustrates a velocity time graph. Determine the distance between x and y. Okay, the distance of a velocity time graph is always the, the area covered by the graph. So the area there between x and y is a rectangle. So this is x and y. This, the time at this point and the time at this point, their separation can be 4 because 8 minus this is 4. From here to this place is 40, according to that place. This is 40, and this is 4. So area of this rectangle is 160, because 4 times 40 is giving me 160 cm square. Is this cm square? No, 160 meter. <laughs> I'm saying cm. 160 meters. Thank you for being part of this class, and I wish you success.